Hello, 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 everybody. This is Renault, and today we have a special video. And uh, I have actually another video I was planning on doing, but I just wanted to get straight to this exciting new announcement by Marvel for their new Warriors trailer. It's a new comic coming out. Let's just jump right in. Let's get a give it a look. My name is Daniel Kibblesmith, and I am the writer of New Warriors number one. I now one of the things that uh, just right off the bat, um, you see this guy's uh, horrible posture, weak neckline. Um, he's like a he's actually a cross between the bearded egg SJW meme and the typical soy boy meme. He's actually a perfect cross between these two. And uh, I have, uh, I don't have it up already. I just jumped right into uh, looking at this. But uh, yeah, so right away, you know, look at that. You know, that stereotypical lean forward. Anyway, let's let's keep going. I got interested in the New Warriors later. I remember seeing them on the shelf when I was a kid, picking up comics in the 90s and just feeling like they were too cool for me. Like I was... Yes, yes. He was looking at comics, and they were too cool for him. That that really says a lot about what we're going to be seeing here today. This guy looked at superheroes and other uh, iconic figures, and not realizing that they're supposed to represent the ideal that you are supposed to quite literally fantasize about being. You know, when you look at Peter Pan, Parker, you're supposed to look at him and recognize that he's just a regular guy, but also fantasize about how cool it would be to have the ability to do the things he does. On the opposite end of the spectrum, think about somebody like Cable. He's buff, he's uh, he's got a bad attitude, he's hardcore, and he's not the, he's not supposed to appeal to the same demographic as Peter Parker, but he still is supposed to represent that fantasy of power, that power fantasy where, oh yeah, he's just a uh, B.A. Baracus, she takes names, he doesn't, he's, he's you know, I'm here to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of bubblegum. He's kind of that kind of a hero. So, you know, but basically, that's what it is. Heroes are supposed to represent a fantasy, and they have all kinds of heroes, so that all kinds of people could I find themselves being idealized, men and women alike. But him, this Chibblesmith person, none of that mattered. All of the superheroes were too cool for him. He just couldn't handle it. That also tells us a whole lot about what we're going to see here. This is going to be incredible. That's Intimidated by, you know, Night Thrasher had a blade coming out of his wrist. You know, Nova was really buff. Uh, they were all the edgy characters uh, for the 90s, as the, as the cover said. New Warriors, I thought, were really interesting characters because they occupy this really cool space. They're forever young, but they've now been around for 30 years. My uh, editors on the, the previous uh, books I'd done, like uh, Loki and Black Panther vs. Deadpool, asked if I'd be interested in doing a New Warriors tie-in that actually poses them as the authority figures in this conflict instead of... Authority figures in this conflict. Interesting, because they... The New Warriors were usually rebels of some kind. So now, is this going to be like uh, Mark Wade and Kwanzaa? Uh, uh, human, humanoids? Or, no, Ignited? Where they, they, get, they, ha they fantasize about having power, and then they just use their powers about hurting people. But they, they are opposed by the government. These people will fantasize about hurting people, and they're going to be in charge. So this will be interesting with the SJW fantasy of having the power to hurt you and get away with it. Of the rebels, and I really liked the tension of that. So because the new warriors are the authority figures in this story, they have to be mentoring new new warriors who are under 21. So just get a look at this. You got the, uh... Wow. So... Look at the colors, they're just pastels, they're androgynous, but not in the good way from the 80s. This is uh, androgyny in the bad way 
from now. Uh, this guy who is um, a cross between Ben 10 and Neo from the Matrix. More on that later. Oh, hey, look. A superhero who's a big girl. She's not the idealized. It's not worth it to work hard and, you know, become athletic. You'll just be a big person but still do athletics. Let me tell you, I'm a head big guy. It doesn't work that way. And look, oh, a loner who's off to the side here being all moody. Yep. Oh, just drink it in. This is going to be so cringe. And, and uh, subject to the, the laws uh, that triggered the outlawed event, this new law is making it illegal to be a vigilante under the age of 21. The artist on New Warriors number one is Luciano Vecchio. He designed all of the new New Warriors and gave them costumes that felt as modern as the New Warriors costumes to sort of feel classic and instantly familiar. So the first character. So, uh, yeah, this is very much very similar to, uh, what was, what's her name? Uh, Gabby Rivera, who, uh, for some of you who don't know, she came out with a new comic book about a big girl with a backpack. Okay, let's uh, look that up right now. Gabby Rivera. Uh, new comic. Your boy Zach did a review. BB Free, that's what it is. No. No, this is worth it because, uh, here it is, here it is. There it is. Look at her. Big husky girl. Backpack. Oh, gee, I wonder. The character that we're introduced to is Trailblazer. She's a group home oh, and hey. foster kid hey, who girl. is volunteering at Does it have a, home? a uh, senior center when Hispanic this mysterious threat kid. shows up and Night Thrasher runs to the rescue. And because she helps him, she ends up... Speaking of Night Thrasher, isn't he gay? Night Thrasher. Isn't Night Thrasher gay? Maybe I'm no, I'm, maybe I'm thinking Midnighter, or something like that. Night Thrasher, Midnighter. I could have sworn. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. The important thing is, look at her. Like these SJWs, they 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 have. They're not actually very creative. It's all recycling. To an unhealthy degree. We've seen this character already. In the crosshairs with this new outlawed law, and she inherited from her grandfather a uh, magic backpack of magic divine backpack. origin. We picked the name Trailblazer because she's somebody who charges into action. She knows that she can do some good with this you know, yes. mysterious gift that she's been given. Screen time is... Yes, a big, hefty girl charging into action. That'll last a good 30 seconds tops. As a internet kid taken to its sort of logical conclusion, as a youth he was exposed to his grandfather's experimental internet gas, and that has patched him permanently into the World Wide Web. The word screen time is only ever used in a sort of restrictive sense, and because we're doing a story about teenage... No, it actually hasn't. Screen time being used as a restrictive sense is not true at all. Rebels, uh, a lot of the names are about teens uh, fighting against labels that are put on them. So, with so when a uh, big hefty girl who's supposed to be a trailblazer, what are you fighting against there? Uh, how you're un totally uncreative and rip off every the same concepts over and over again? Screen time, we liked the idea that he has infinite screen time. Snowflake and Safe Space are... Snowflake and Safe Space. Um, I was actually brought to this, inspired to make this video because of uh, the Vonster who was making Monster MD. I happened to come across one of his tweets and I looked at Snowflake and Safe Space. The twins, and their names are very... And I saw he had, he showed me this image 
and I thought, this can't be real. This has to be a parody. This can't be real. But no, it is. It is actually real. They actually have these androgynous, pastel-riddled, man in pink, girl in blue. Oh, that's averting expectations. Except not, because this is actually a cliche at this point. Oh, and by the way, uh, even though he's femme-looking and she's masculine-looking, you still give him a more masculine body type, and they still gave her a more feminine body type. So they couldn't even commit to the bit. Similar to screen time, it's this idea that these are terms that get thrown around on the internet that they don't see as uh, derogatory to take those words and kind of wear them as badges of honor. Safe space is kind of a big burly... He's not burly. Sort of stereotypical jock. He can create... He's not as burly stereotypical jock. He's far from it. Force fields, but he can only trigger them if he's protecting somebody else. So you're not playing against stereotype. You're playing into stereotype. Snowflake is non-binary and goes... So you're not playing against stereotype. You're playing into stereotype. Oh, something from Marvel? Non-binary? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's unexpected. By they, them. Snowflake has the power to... Wait, she goes by they, them? Boy, that's not... That's going to be confusing. You know, this was actually handled in uh, Star, Star Wars. And they also had a character that refers to themselves as they, them. And it hurt the flow of the narrative because they, them is clunky and clumsy and confusing in a narrative sense. Generates individual crystallized snowflake-shaped shurikens. The connotations of the- Oh, a snowflake makes snow-like shurikens. The word snowflake in our culture right now are something fragile. Oh, by the way, in our culture right now. And- uh, uh, So basically he's admitting that this comic is not necessarily supposed to be timeless is not going to stand up to the test of time. It's supposed to just be a big old take that to modern politics. And they're, it's like your boy Zach said, they're chasing short money. They're, they're not thinking long term. Um, yeah. This is a character who is uh, turning it into something sharp. Snowflake is the person who has the more offensive power. And Safe Space is the person who has the more defensive power. Yeah. Yeah, uh, safe space having the more defensive power is 100% expected. There is nothing, there's nothing subversive about that at all. And Snowflake hurling snow-like shurikens, that's very predictable. I mean, with Snowflake, you don't really have anywhere to go with the name. The idea was that uh, they would mirror each other and complement each other. E negative is the goth kid. When he was a baby, he got a rogue life saving blood transfusion. We so that's not a really a good. Let's look back at that here. So this is not a goth kid. This is an exaggeration of a parody of a stereotype. So. But again, I have a feeling that Kibblesmith, or whatever his name is, um, was a loner who never actually talked to people. And sad to say that he was probably a person who got beaten up. And I don't mean that in any sort of positive way. But if this is what you think a goth kid looks like, even in any remote way, or that this is about goth, then you've never talked to a goth. That's why this character is a stereotype of an exaggeration of a parody or whatever you want to call it there's nothing realistic or even um again with the hero heroic mythos they're supposed to be idealized in some way like you're supposed to want to be them in some way and kibblesworth or kibblesmith or whatever kibbles let's just call him kibbles because i can't remember um, hated those characters. So he's making these undesirable cre creatures or creations that people don't want to be. Oh, how subversive. B negative. Remember when the in the uh, group shot from earlier 
with B negative was standing all alone and has a bad attitude and has the name B negative. Oh, that again, nothing about the only one who was even remotely subverting ex subversive was Trailblazer. But there's nothing actually trailblazing about it. It's been done to death by Faith over at Valiant. Um, Gabby Rivera has already made that character. So everything else has been done and done better. Nothing was subverted. Transfusion, we assume from Michael Morbius. And now we assume from Michael Morbius. Oh, so you mean you just created the character and didn't even have the background fleshed out. And you're just making it up along the way. He has a very similar look and very similar vampire powers. B negative also is obviously a pun. It's a blood type, uh, which is great for a vampire character. Isn't O negative or O positive the one where it can be uh, anyone? Hold on. Blood type. Hold on. Blood type. We're doing some real time uh, pointing out how this is awful. So, blood type. Yeah, O. Maybe O. Relations. Here be antigen, red blood type. Blah, blah, blah. They're cool. Can receive blood only from a group O individual. Okay, so they can only receive it from a group O. Okay, so O negative blood can be used by anyone, but it can only be received from other O individuals okay that kind of sucks but anyway so yeah the o negative not b negative but he's he's so down with the pun that he just doesn't care nothing matters nobody cares it's and it's also a proud ownership of the idea of having a bad attitude i want yes taking proud ownership of a, having a bad attitude because that hasn't been done by Wolverine for the past 30 years. I want the people who read Our New Warriors to feel all of the excitement that they felt uh, if they read the 90s one. We want it to have big colorful characters, personality clashes, uh, romance. Personality clashes. I guarantee you that will be a two-panel thing where then they hug and all make romance, a diverse cast, which is something that the new Warriors titles have always strived to make a priority. Every no, no, no. They didn't actually strive to make it a priority. They just happened to have diversity. It wasn't a central point. They weren't trying to be diverse. They were just diverse. What you've done is... Every new Warriors comic has always... Yeah, what you've done is try way too hard to enforce diversity and pulled it off very badly. Felt like a reflection of the, the year that it came out. And uh, I don't think we're worried about- Actually, uh, when that was made, it was made to be timeless. And they succeeded in that. Because anyone can uh, pick up those old books and, from 40, 30, 40, 50 years ago and still empathize with them. About being dated. I think we're way more interested about it being now. Oh, okay. You're not even worried about being dated. Like I said, they're chasing a the short money. This will be a negligible storyline in two years when all this culture SJW bullshit it dies off. So, yeah. Oh, it goes on Kibble Smith. His name was Kibble Smith. Okay. So, oh, no, 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 no. We're not doing that again. So, there you go. I ha when I saw this, I had to make a video. It's embarrassing. Well, I mean, I keep thinking it should be embarrassing, but it never is because the people who do this kind of stuff lack self-awareness. Um, I 
I don't have anything else to say. This that's the sort of series that um, people are definitely going to be picking up for the sole purpose of roasting it. Um, I to be honest, I might actually take that series up just to roast it. Um, I'm not even joking. This could be the thing that gets me to finally buy a Marvel comic after three years. After three years, I might finally buy a Marvel comic. Well, no, I'm not actually gonna. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I I I want to get the comics to roast, but I even my four dollars, I don't want Marvel to get. So anyway, that's the video. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Thank you so much. This is gonna be fun. Bye bye.